to For Real. It's Wednesday, and that means it's time for the News Moto, where you get to watch footage of a ride in Cambodia, and I update you on the news. This week, Jeremy takes you for a look around the riverside areas of Siem Reap Town. At For Real, we donate all of the money we earn from YouTube to charities in Cambodia. Here's the total we've donated so far. It is thanks to you that we can do this because the time you spend watching our videos is converted to cash and then paid to us each month by YouTube. We're 10 days into Heartprint's Match at May campaign and every donation made to them throughout May will be matched by partners like us. We have contributed $800 for matching. This means donations in May will be multiplied up to 17 times until all of the committed funds are exhausted. The sooner you donate, the more your donation will be matched. If you can spare $5 right now, it could become an $85 donation. A little becomes a lot. Many hands make light work. And idle hands do the work of the devil. Wait, too far. Anyway, while we're asking, please like and subscribe and share for real. Before we get started, a quick plug about our new channel, For Real Global. Yes, Jeremy has finally finished the first ever episode, which will be out on Sunday. I'll put a link below. Today is Wednesday the 10th of May and we will go for gold with all of the Southeast Asian game news and then we will drone on before finishing with a green bus ride. After 64 years of waiting, the opening ceremony of the 32nd Southeast Asian Games was held in Phnom Penh and it captured the hearts of Cambodians, sports delegates from all countries, plus national and international guests. The amazing arrangements and performances from artists help the world to better understand the history and the progress of Cambodia. The first Southeast Asian Games were held in 1959, with the event expanding to 14 countries in Southeast Asia. There are 100,890 athletes and officials across 579 disciplines in 36 sports in this year's event. Those are some big numbers. Let's take a look at today's medal tally. Up until yesterday, Cambodia was leading the way, but there has been a change in the leaderboard with Vietnam sneaking up to take out the top spot with 39 golds and a total of 127 medals. Cambodia is not far behind in second place though, also with 39 golds and a total of 121 medals. Third place currently goes to Thailand with 39 gold and 113 medals overall. It's great to see Cambodia doing so well as host nation, and not to mention a significantly lower population than Vietnam, Thailand, the Philippines and Indonesia, who round out the top five. AirAsia is also looking to get into a gold medal position and is teaming up with the Union of Youth Federations of Cambodia's Beyond the Games campaign. At the signing ceremony, AirAsia unveiled their Beyond the Games aircraft designs. The designs will be utilised on all of AirAsia's Malaysia AK numerous domestic and international routes, especially those within the ASEAN region, where there are numerous opportunities to promote Cambodia's tourism industry after the Games have finished. Cambodia and Singapore have reaffirmed their mutual commitment towards cooperation in key areas like renewable energy, carbon credits and technical cooperation. The Prime Minister met with other senior ministers for talks at the Peace Palace. The Prime Minister encouraged both sides to review and implement mutual agreements, especially in the energy and carbon credit marketing sectors. During the meeting, the Singaporean Minister congratulated Cambodia for organising the Southeast Asian Games so smoothly. Having visited Singapore's Southeast Asian Games team, he also added that all the athletes and delegates appreciate Cambodia's warm welcome and hospitality. He noted that a lot of preparation goes into ensuring athletes can perform well on competition day, and athletes need support for good nutrition, physiotherapy, medical and logistical issues. Here's some trivia for you. Bilateral relations between Cambodia and Singapore were established on the 10th of August in 1965. Cambodia was one of the first countries to recognise Singapore's sovereignty when it was first expelled from the Malaysian Federation in 1965. The Ministry of Interior is prioritising completion of a new sub-decree on the management of drones before the upcoming national election. A working group has been cooperating with relevant ministries to finalise the new law before the national election in July. The draft law is intended to regulate the registration, production, appropriate usage and zoning restrictions for all types of drones in order to ensure security and public order. It will apply to all types of drones in Cambodia. However, Drones employed for the purposes of national defence and security are defined by a separate legal agreement.
Many countries are using drones already for many purposes, including agriculture. For example, using drones to spray crops can save a lot of time and money. They are also an efficient tool for gathering quick data for crop surveillance, aerial photography and to monitor road traffic, among other tasks. More details to come once that law is finalised. So, sorry to drone on so much, let's talk about natural disasters. In the first four months of this year, 17 lightning strikes have killed eight people and injured four others. Lightning has also killed 16 cattle. Compared to the same four-month period last year, there were fewer fatalities due to lightning strikes. In 2022, nine people were killed and a further nine were injured. 23 cattle were killed and 11 homes were destroyed. This year's lightning strikes occurred mostly in the north of the country. In recent years, there have been more frequent cases of lightning strikes. The Disaster Management Inspection Force is preparing appropriate measures to help educate everyone about how to reduce the danger of lightning strikes. One of the best methods is to install a lightning protection system like lightning rods on the top of structures. Now something slightly less shocking. A man boasted on his Facebook page that he had several extra tickets to the Southeast Asian Games football events. His post went viral and drew the ire of many citizens and the Minister of Information. The man later apologised to the Cambodian people and the Information Minister over his selfish conduct on his Facebook page. He first posted photos of the many tickets he had for the football match between Cambodia and Myanmar, writing, Everybody is sad because they don't have any tickets to see the football match, but I am sad too because I have a lot of tickets but no partner to go with me. Many Facebook users commented on the post. Some said he was bullying or mocking those who had no tickets, especially after they tried so hard to get them. After he received several critical comments over his Facebook post, he wrote an apology to the Cambodian people asking that they forgive him. I was wrong because I showed no critical thinking, he wrote. I didn't think about the feelings of our fellow citizens who do not have tickets. My post was a mistake. However, I had no bad intentions. It is a life lesson for me which I will keep forever to review and understand. Maybe the real question is how he came to have so many tickets in the first place when a lot of people are having so much trouble accessing them. These next people also did not show much critical thinking. Cambodia's anti-drug police have cracked down on cross-border drug trafficking, arresting two local men with nearly 10 kilos of illicit drugs, the National Police said on Sunday. The duo, aged 17 and 20 years old, were apprehended during a raid in northwest Bante Mienche province's Poi Pet City, which, as you probably know, shares a border with Thailand. A total of 9.88 kilos of ketamine, hidden in 10 plastic packs with commercially packaged freeze-dried durian, were confiscated from both suspects. The National Police are hunting for the masterminds and the remaining accomplices. Cambodian authorities nabbed 5,572 drug-related suspects, including 105 foreigners, during the January to April period of 2023, seizing a total of 361 kilos of narcotics. A man who wielded a pistol in a crowded Phnom Penh barbershop after claiming to be insulted by customers and staff will face legal charges. Police say that the 33-year-old man had been asked to leave the salon after he disturbed other patrons by behaving in an odd and inappropriate fashion. He then returned, brandishing a black Glock 19 handgun. He threatened the hairdressers and the patrons, causing some customers to flee from the salon mid-haircut. Police were summoned and arrested the man for his threatening behaviour. Nothing tells people you're behaving in an odd or inappropriate fashion like waving a gun around in a barbershop. Let's take a look at Cambodia's weather this week. During the coming week, Cambodia will see minimum temperatures ranging from 25 to 7 degrees Celsius and maximums ranging from 34 to 36 degrees Celsius. That is much cooler than it has been and I think those 4 degrees in the maximum there are going to make all of the difference. Some parts of Cambodia have been up to 40 degrees and it's been incredibly uncomfortable for people. So some good news there. And we're going to finish up with another piece of good news. Public electric buses will be operating in cities all over Cambodia after a successful trial in Siem Reap. The project was initiated between the Transport Minister and the General Director of the Global Green Growth Institute, or the GGGI. In addition to the planned bus project, the GGGI will bring state-of-the-art technology to collect and manage waste to improve the health, hygiene and livelihoods of Cambodians. That's amazing news and hopefully we can do a vlog about the buses soon. 
That brings us to the end of this week's news. You're now up to date with all of the most important events in the kingdom. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, have a great week, and we'll see you very soon. Mm -hmm.